Hello and welcome to our pumpkin tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to make one of these lovely pumpkins, perfect for autumn or Halloween. We've got three sizes that we've created for you, a large, medium and small pumpkin, but you can also make up your own size and we'll explain how. So whether you have a sewing machine at home or not, you will be able to complete this tutorial because we'll explain the steps that you need to take if you don't have a sewing machine. So let's get started. Let's start by collecting up the supplies that you're going to need to create our lovely pumpkins. Obviously you will need to choose some fabric and you could choose to work with either a cotton or a lightweight upholstery fabric. This stripy fabric here is actually a lightweight upholstery linen. You're going to need some felt and that's for the stem of the pumpkin. You're going to need some stuffing and we just worked with a 100% polyester toy stuffing to stuff the shape of the pumpkin. And you're also going to need either some embroidery floss or some string or something and we, we use that around the outside to give the shape that you can see here. You will need to get yourself a template and what we would recommend, we'll be going through the sizes for you with you in a second, but I would recommend drawing that out onto paper or card for ease. And in terms of the other equipment that will be useful during the process of creating the pumpkin, I would recommend having some pins, a ruler or a tape measure, some needles because we will need to do a little bit of hand sewing, either a pencil or a little bit of chalk so that you can draw around your template onto your fabric and a pair of scissors for cutting it out. The other thing that will be handy is a glue gun or some glue to attach the stem onto the pumpkin at the end. So if you collect up all of the supplies, then we can get started. Let's start by looking at the sizes that you can create. Now we've created three sizes ready for you to work with, and we're going to be working with the medium size in this tutorial. Now the pattern that we've created here for the medium size is 7 inches in height, which is 18 centimetres, and 14 inches in width, which is 36 centimetres. If you would like to work with a larger or smaller pumpkin, then please follow the link in the description box below to our blog post where you will find those measurements. Now really, you can design a pattern for your size that you wish to work with. The key is that the width has to be double the height of your pattern piece. I would recommend drawing this out onto paper or card because it will be easier to work with. And the key thing that you have to do here is to give yourself a grain line. But the grain line must be on the bias of your pattern piece. And the bias is the 45 degree angle. So what I did here was to use a ruler and I measured halfway in the middle of my pattern piece on both the width and the height so that I sort of got a cross there in the middle. That allowed me to build myself a little one inch, 2.5 centimeters right angle here so that I could then draw my 45 degree angle through my right angle points so that I know that this is correct. And I've put arrows on the end of it. And I'll show you when we put this onto our fabric how important this is. If you don't cut your pattern on the bias, you will find that it won't work as well and you won't get as good a shape with the pumpkin. You might find that the fabric all sort of ruches up because we need the bias because this is the stretchiest side of the fabric. It's got the most give in the fabric if we use this grain line. So I'd like you to do this with the pattern of your choice and draw me back here so that we can cut them out. Now I'm going to lay my pattern onto my fabric with the right side facing up. And what I need to do is to make sure that my grain line that I've put in for my 45 degree angle is straight in line with the selvage of your fabric over here. Now you can see the selvage of this fabric, it's very clear because it's got a white band and some fabrics will have that. Others you might have a fraying edge or you might just have an edge with little dots on. 
And the selvage is how the fabric was made. So that's the edge from selvage to selvage would have been as the fabric was created. And that is always what you're going to line your grain line up with. So we're going to take a ruler or a tape measure and we're going to measure from the selvage. You want to choose a point that doesn't change. So I'm going to go from the edge of the orange where the orange meets the white on this side here. And I'm going to measure that at the bottom of my grain line and at the top of my grain line. And I'm just checking that that is straight. And you can use some weights or something to hold your pattern on while you do that, or you're welcome to pin around the edge of the pattern, whatever works best for you. So now I know that my pattern is sitting with the line that I drew the 45 degree angle true and straight with my grain line, I'm ready to either draw around it or pin it on and cut it out. So I'm just going to draw around mine using some chalk, but you could use a pencil, whatever works for you, or you're welcome to pin it on and then cut it out. So I'm going to draw all the way around my rectangle and you can join me back here once you've done that. And then I'm going to cut mine out. Simply cut around your drawn shape if you drew it onto the fabric or if you'd pinned on your pattern, then you would simply cut around the pattern using a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter. Once you've cut out your piece of fabric, you're going to position it with the right sides together, like so. So it's folded in half along the short edge. And we're going to be pinning the two edges, short edges together, like so. And we're going to be sewing along this edge here. Now we're going to be doing this on the sewing machine. However, if you don't have a sewing machine, you're more than welcome to do this by hand sewing. So join me at the sewing machine. At the sewing machine, you're going to stitch one quarter of an inch, five millimeters away from the raw edge of the two layers of fabric. You're going to start by doing a few stitches forwards and a few stitches backwards and then stitch along the whole of the length, removing the pins as you go. And I'm just sewing this with a straight stitch of a length of 2.5 millimeters. As I said before, if you don't have a sewing machine, you are more than welcome to actually sew this by hand instead. And when you get to the end, we're going to back stitch as well to secure the stitching. After having sewn that seam together, I pressed the seam allowances open using an iron. Now we're going to go to one of the raw edges, it doesn't matter which, and we're going to sew a gathering stitch because we need to pull this in and gather up all the fabric. Now we're going to be working with a stitch length of four millimeters. I position the needle into the fabric and the key here is to not sew backwards. We're going to be pulling on the tails of thread to gather in the fabric. So you must not stitch back stitch. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing and I'm going to do this again, a quarter of an inch, five millimeters away from the edge of the fabric. And as I go over the seam allowances here, I might need to raise my pressed foot just to make sure that they're flat as you go through. And I'm going to do this all the way until I get back to the start of my sewing. I don't want to go over the stitching when I get back to it. I just want to stop close to it and make sure that you don't catch the threads from the other row in the stitching. So move those out of the way. So up to where I started, another couple of stitches. There we go. Now, to create an even gather, you always need to sew more than one row of these stitches. So I'm going to take this out and put it back in the sewing machine. Now you can see, here's the first row of stitching. I took the fabric out of the machine so that I could cut off the thread, and I'm starting again. And I'm going to be sewing to the inside of the previous stitch by about one eighth, three millimeters. Again, I'm doing the same large stitch length of four millimeters, and I'm not going to backstitch. And I'm going to sew this again all the way around 
until I get back to the beginning, just as we did previously. And just be careful that you don't sew over the long threads left from the first row of stitching. So now you should have your piece of fabric with the wrong side facing out. We've got our initial seam that we sewed so that we could create a circle. And that was sewing the shorter edges together and I pressed that open with an iron. Then we wanted to gather one of the sides. It doesn't matter whether you start on this side or this side because this fabric is symmetrical. Obviously, if you've got a directional print, then I would recommend doing it at the bottom of the print because this is going to be the bottom of the pumpkin. So we've got our two rows of our long stitch length four, which is our gathering stitch. And now we've got the tails of thread here. What we need to do is we need to take the threads. So we need to pick the two threads together and you need to choose two from the same side. So from the wrong side, not the right side of the fabric I've chosen two. And I'm starting on one side and I'll also have two on the, at the end. So I've got two from the start of the stitching and two from the end of the stitching. And I'm going to simply hold them together and pull evenly on them. And you can see I'm gathering up the fabric now. So I'm gently moving that around. And I would have a little go on one side and then I can leave those and then I can pull the two threads from the wrong side of the fabric at the end of the stitching and do the same that side. And we want to do this until we've gathered the, all of the fabric in. And you want to work the gathers all the way around that circle. As you can see now, I've pulled on my threads and I've gathered in the fabric as tightly as it will go. And this is going to be the bottom of the pumpkin. Now, what I tend to do to start with is the threads that you've been pulling on, I tend to knot them together. So the two threads from the start of the stitching and the two threads from the end of the stitching. And just pull them in nice and tightly in a knot. Perfect. Now, you will have a little bit of a hole here. So I tend to get a needle and thread, and we're going to sew through this hole to hold this all nice and tightly so that we don't have a hole at the bottom of the pumpkin. So if you collect a needle and thread, I'll show you how to do that. Now I've threaded a needle with some thread and I've created a double thread by bringing both of the threads back to the bottom and tying a knot. And this is just good for security. We want something that's strong sewing through this part. The other thing that I've done is pulled the threads from the right side of my gathering stitch out the, through the bottom so that there won't be any threads left on the right side. And these can all move out the way. So all I'm going to do is simply sew through this and you can just go backwards and forwards. It doesn't have to be neat at all. I'm simply just gonna be pushing the needle backwards and forwards to try and hold all this bit together. One thing to add is that if you didn't have a sewing machine, and you can still do this by, as I said, hand sewing the first row of stitching, and you can also hand sew the gathering stitch. You just would sew a longer stitch and we are going to be hand sewing it at the top of the pumpkin, so you will see how we do that then. So just do this enough times to make sure that it's all nice and secure at the bottom. Then you can tie a knot to tie off your thread. Now as you can see, I finished sewing the bottom of the gathering all together nice and tightly, and I just tied a knot and trimmed the threads. Now I've turned everything through the right side facing out, and we're ready to stuff the pumpkin. So I just used a 100% polyester toy stuffing and you simply want to fill up your shape with stuffing and you will need to add quite a lot. You really need to compact this. And I would put in enough so that you're sort of three quarters full 
And then we're actually going to do a gathering stitch along the top as well by hand. So if you can get a needle and thread again, I'm going to show you how to do that. So now you've stuffed about three quarters of your pumpkin shape. We're going to complete a gathering stitch around the top edge and I'm going to show you how to do this one by hand. If you're working with the medium or the large size pumpkin, you will probably find that you could actually do this top edge on the sewing machine if you have a sewing machine and you're more than welcome to do that. You may want to not add the stuffing until after you've been able to sew around there. But for those of you that haven't got a sewing machine, I wanted to show you how to sew this by hand and definitely for the small pumpkin, you'll probably find you have to sew this bit by hand because it can be tricky to get through the sewing machine. So I've got a needle and thread and I'm going to be stitching a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. I've tied a knot at the end of my thread but I've also sewn over myself a couple of times. You need to do this to make sure that when you pull on the thread and to gather the fabric you don't lose the end of it. And then you're simply going to work your way around doing a running stitch which we can go do by going up and down into the fabric a quarter of an inch away from the edge the raw edge of the fabric and you can work with about a quarter of an inch five millimeters in the stitch size and you're simply going to work your way around the top of the pumpkin doing this. We will just like we did on the sewing machine need to do more than one row so that we get an even gather but I'm going to let you do this all the way until you get back to the start. So now you should be able to see that I worked all my way around in the first row and I've left the tail when I got back to the start here and the tail is what we're going to pull in a second. Now we need to do another row again to make sure that we get an even gather, the exactly the same as you would do on the sewing machine. And again I've started into the fabric about one eight three millimeters away from the first row and I've tied a knot at the end of my thread and sewn over myself for security. And again, I'm going to work my way around underneath the row that we did previously. And the key thing here is that you really don't need to make the stitches in the same place. Actually, you don't want to make them in the same position. So really just go for it. It doesn't matter where they end up. The reason is because of the two rows you want the stitches to be in a different position so that you can create an even gather. So work your way all the way around just like you did for the top row and join me back here when you've done that. Now if you had done this by hand you're going to have two threads on the right side of the fabric and you can pull on those to start to gather the top edge of the fabric. The same if you'd done this on the machine, you would just pull on the two threads from the same side, so ideally from the right side for this. And on the machine obviously you could work from both the start and the end of the stitch, but by hand we had to sew over ourselves at the end of the stitch to make sure that it wouldn't come out. And just work this around the pumpkin. Now you will find that you need to keep adding more stuffing as you're doing this. You do really need to make sure that you add enough stuffing and that you've really got a lot of stuffing in here because otherwise you'll find that when we pull our embroidery floss around the pumpkin you end up with it looking a little bit, the fabric will look a little bit saggy. So I've kept adding stuffing until I've got a really firm shape and we've pulled in that, those gathering stitches so they're as sort of tight as they will go. Now we're going to get our needle and thread again because we do need to sew this little gap together and make sure that this isn't going to come undone. So join me back here with a needle and thread. Now I've got my needle with another double thread and a knot tied at the bottom and I'm simply just as we did on the bottom going to sew through this bulk at the top of the pumpkin to pull it tight and to stop there from being a hole. This again does not have to look neat because we will be finishing this off afterwards. It's just to hold it all nice and together. Once you're happy with that, you can tie a knot in your thread again. 
So now I'm going to show you how to create the effect that we've got going on here, creating the pumpkin shape. And we've used embroidery floss to do this. You want to take some embroidery floss, a color that works with your project, and you, want, you don't want to separate this, you want to use it as it comes. Alternatively, you could try some string or something similar. You want to make sure that your needle has got a big enough eye so that you can thread this. And I'm working with quite a large needle. So what you want to start by doing is by going from the bottom through to the top of the pumpkin. And I'm going to show you how to do that again now. Now you can see I've got another bit of embroidery floss coming out here. Once I've done my first pull through from the bottom to the top, I then tend, to, and I've got an, I feel like I've got enough thread to go around the whole of the pumpkin. I tend to knot this, but I do leave it here until the end, because if I find that I've run out of thread, I can then use this one again. So we're going from the bottom through to the top, and you may want to use a thimble or something to push this. You want to ideally come out in the center of the top. And this bit is quite difficult. You may find that it's useful to get someone to help you or potentially grab a pair of pliers like I'm going to do here to be able to pull on that needle. And then you're going to pull the embroidery thread. And what you want to do is you want to create sort of a halfway marking for this, and then you can create quarter markings and then eighths. And it's really up to you. You just want to nicely move them around and then pull them quite taut so that you get the shape that we've got there. So let's go for one in between these two. So from the bottom in the center, pushing to the top in the center, and taking my pliers to grab that. There we go. Pulling on the embroidery thread, and I'm just gonna move the floss to where I want it, on the pumpkin, and pull taut, just like so. So I'm going to let you do this for the rest of the segments until you feel like you've really got some nice segments working with your pumpkin. Once you're happy with the pumpkin and how tight you've been able to pull your embroidery floss, you can obviously knot your embroidery floss and cut that off on both ends. Then you can start by creating a stem for the pumpkin. Now we just used some brown felt for this, but again, you can really use whatever that's up to you. The ideal thing about felt is that it doesn't fray. And for the size pumpkin that we're working with, we measured a height of one inch, which is 2.5 centimeters, and a width of 2.25 inches, which is six centimeters. And I've cut that out of the felt ready. If you're making the larger pumpkin, then please follow the link in the in the drop down box below so that you can find out how large you need to cut out your stem. Now you can sew this together or if you'd rather and be quicker about it we can glue it and that's how I'm going to show you what to do with the hot glue gun. Now really you can decide on the side of the pumpkin you want to put this. If you don't like the top of the pumpkin you prefer the bottom then by all means you can turn it over it's really up to you. You want to take the little piece of felt and you want to roll it up tightly. Then using a glue gun, we're going to put a small amount of glue along this edge so that we can then stick it down. And we're just going to roll that up and stick it down. You can take away any of the remaining glue with your fingers. Once you've rolled up the small little piece of felt, you're then going to take the glue gun and you're going to glue on the bottom of the felt. And then you're going to put that onto the center of your pumpkin and push that in like so. And here you have it, your very own pumpkin. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned something new. Hopefully you're happy with your finished pumpkin, whether you've chosen to make the large, medium or small size. Thanks for watching.